Hello again. Now, the dispute over the appointment of a Gauteng Growth and Development Agency CEO has led to the board being dissolved. This is a second board to be dissolved by Gauteng Economic Development MEC Tasnim Mutara in just two months. Now, the 13-member board was appointed in 2021 for a three-year term. Last month, the MEC, as I've said, also dissolved another board that was the Houting Gambling Board after half of its board members had resigned. These resignations follow disagreements over the appointment of the acting CEO. Well, for more discussion on this and what's really happening in these two agencies, which are very important in the province of Gauteng, I'm joined in studio by Dr. Spongile Vilagazi, the former chair of the Gauteng Growth and Development Agency and advocate Anthea Platt, also a former chair of the Gauteng Gambling Board. Ladies, welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much, Jen. So you were fired on Friday from yep. the board. The board was dissolved on Friday. Did you see this coming? Yes, we saw it coming. Um, and uh, um, some of us, we even were willing to allow that process to happen because we just couldn't stand what we were being asked to be doing. What were you being asked to do by the MEC? Um, basically to start a process from scratch, a process that had been seen to a conclusion. And um, we've believed quite strongly as a board that we at least deserved a reason why uh, the process so must be started. What was this process about which you said had already started? So the process of finding a CEO. Um, it started uh, with the previous uh, uh, MEC, Park uh, Stau. Park Stau. Okay. Um, so the legislation is quite clear that the MEC appoints. Um, and it's silent on what is the process of appointment. But there are other pieces of um, policies and legislation that direct to what that must, how that process must run. And essentially the process sits with the board. Um, there's precedents in the past, um, the p other MECs, previous MECs have followed uh, this process and it had never been questioned before. But the new MEC didn't want to follow the process that had been used before and it had no problems. Yes, so she was insisting that it, she needs to uh, manage the process herself. So she must take it out of the board um, and manage it herself and the board must simply nominate a board member who will go into this process of hers um, and represent the board there. But previously the board had been involved in, in the employment or the selection rather of a CEO. Yeah. So I mean uh, then it's like saying the president appoints judges. Yes, I mean that's not in dispute. The president appoints judges. But there's a process. But there's a process. And, and we all saw the process live at the JSE a few months ago. Exactly. So it's exactly the same thing. There's a process and there's a, there's a body that is uh, um, uh, expected to manage that process and since the board manages the organization and the legislation is very clear on that as well the board manages the the, the organization we've got a policy called uh, transversal policy that's uh, applied across um, in terms of recruitment and that policy is quite clear that uh, recruitment sits with uh, management and in this case management would be the board because the board is managing the organization. Okay, let me bring in Advocate Platt. You are also a former chairperson of an important agency in Gauteng and that's the gambling board. Last month your board was dissolved. Why? Over similar issues that uh, Sibon Gile has just touched on and that is the acting CEO position. So we were also in the process of appointing a, fi uh, an, a CEO um, and at that stage we were in the last section of it doing final interviews when the MEC decided that she wanted to appoint an acting CEO, uh, which she has the right to do, but also these processes to follow. Um, yeah, I've seen some of the correspondence that have been shared between yes. yourselves and the, and, the a and the MEC, and then I've seen the City Press story. And I'm just w wondering here, are we talking here about an MEC, I mean, uh, who's uh, not really uh, willing so to speak, to follow due process and therefore that speaks to governance? Yes. She, she says she wants to follow processes and when we want to follow that process, then she says she has the power to do it despite the process. So hence that's what she did. She appointed the acting CEO, fired the current C acting CEO and then just ran with her, pro with her own process.
Now, this, 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 this is not, doesn't bode well. I mean, dissolving a board, uh, whether it's the Growth and Development Agency or it's a, it's a gambling board, will affect the functioning of, of, of the organization. Uh, do you think the MEC considered that at all? Looking, like looking at the, the implications, I would argue that it's actually an irrational decision. She did not consider everything, what it will mean, um, um, you know, the, the moment that this board is dissolved. For instance, um, the, the, group board, the, the group board is made up of individuals who are also um, chairpersons in the subsidiary. So G G GGDA has four subsidiaries that it, it's, it's responsible for. It's, it's a shareholder in those subsidiaries. So we've got chairs of those subsidiaries who are members. We're, we're sitting on your former board. On, on this board. So the moment you dissolve the group board, you are essentially dissolving um, those subsidiary boards as well because suddenly they no longer have chairs and because the the MOI is very specific that only the chairperson appoints chairpersons of the subsidiary boards so you will have to wait for the new chairpersons to be appointed uh, for the MEC to be able to have or those uh, uh, subsidiaries to have their own um, chairs as well so the MEC does not get involved in that process. I, is it fair to then say the gambling board for example and now the, the growth and development agency are currently rudderless? Uh, yes. Advocate? Yes it's Claire? definitely fair to say. We don't have a board, we don't have an administrator and I'm just told they dissolved the audit and risk committee so there's no corporate governance structures. That Which can audit and risk committee? In the, the gambling, gambling board? board? Yes that can oversee the gambling board so currently there's no one. So it is rudderless. It's just run by an acting CEO. Now, I mean, the significance of this for me is that you, both your former agencies, let me call them that because you are no longer yes. part of, there's no board because it's been dissolved. And she has powers to dissolve the board from what you said, although there's a process yes. which needs to be followed. But, but, but um, the, the, the role of the growth and development agency in Gauteng, just paint a, a very quick picture for our viewers. I mean, what are you responsible for and what size of budgets are you managing? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's basically the agency, it's the biggest agency of the department, maybe the one. Um, uh, uh, it's we are, the mandate is to grow the economy um, on behalf, obviously, of the province. Very clear mandate. It, that's done through infrastructure development, um, um, you, you know, like strategic infrastructure projects that, that get developed um, and also in, in inviting investment into the proje pro province. So quite key, um, uh, you know, it has four subsidiaries, the Gauteng um, uh, 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 CZ, which is at the o o OR Tambo precinct. Um, last, just last week, they, uh, we were launching uh, some of the big projects. There. It's a diamond uh, beneficiation uh, uh, CZ. We had the president and the king of Belgium. Of Belgium, yes. Yeah. Our reporter was there and yeah. we spoke to one of the South African guys, one of the few South African guys who's in the diamond uh, processing business. Exactly. So when this board um, uh, 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 was formulated, that SEZ had literally was not this moving. SEZ Special Economic, economic Zone. zone. Yeah. It wasn't moving. And this, this board had to make sure that uh, we get it to what you saw on Friday. The irony of that is that the same day you we got your letter <laughs> being fired <laughs> on the same day or being dissolved. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the one. And then we've got the AITC as well, which is uh, um, um, uh, responsible for automotive um, industry. We've got the Con Hill, uh, Constitutional Hill, um, and then we also have the Twane um, uh, TIH. It's the Innovation Hub, yeah. which is based in Twane. So all of these uh, entities are meant to together. Um, create programs that incubate small businesses, provide training um, to individuals who might be entrepreneurs um, in the spaces, uh, create that's how they then create jobs. Um, we very also critical have role very in, critical. in today's South Africa mm -hmm. when we are battling such high unemployment rates, particularly of young people. Exactly. So we also have the, um, the Lancera project, which is what the smart city that the famous uh, president yeah, spoke, uh, spoke about. about. A few years ago, yes. We are busy trying to uh, develop that as well. We've got Western SEZ as well, which is trying to resuscitate the, the economy of the Western area in the Val as well. So, integrated 
the mm. agency is responsible for ensuring that people are employed. How much money is sitting in all these spaces? If you had to, is there any figure? Do you have? A, I mean, because the, there's a lot of money at stake here. Yeah. So it depends on what the 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 the, pro the department brings for us, but there's also what we raise from okay. an investment. But, it, but it's hundreds of millions of it's rand. It's to, to be exact, on the, from the department, what we get is uh, it's about well, 580 million mm -hmm. um, from the department, and then we raise funds. The, each of the projects must raise some of the funding. So it's quite themselves. a bit of, of money, then it's an important role. The gambling board, what, are you, what is your role today? The gambling board r um, regulates l casinos and licensing, bingos, bookmakers. So it regulates the gambling industry. The betting industry The betting well? industry. It's also one of the biggest revenue um, agencies for Gauteng. And as because of that, we also do a lot of sports development. So we provide funding to organizations so that they can provide um, one of the big ones is the multi-purpose courts in various uh, schools. Yeah. Uh, one of the I I responses I read that she wrote, I think it was to you, Dr. Villegas, I think she said that the trust between yourselves had broken down, the MEC, citing one of the reasons in the letter. I mean, uh, how do you respond to that? Well, tr I guess trust is subjective, so she has a right to say trust has been broken. Um, but the role of the board is not necessarily, not, it's not an employer-employee relationship where you need to be trusting mm. each you other. You have an oversight it's role It's an oversight play. role. Um, we have fiduciary duties, ethical duties towards the, the, the shareholder and the organization. So for as long as that role has been performed to its utmost um, uh, best, it, for me, that's how the board should be judged. Are mm. we behaving ethically and are we Where are you behaving ethically? Uh, at all times. Um, that's one of the reasons why we were refusing this process because it would be, from a governance perspective, it breaks all governance rules. So we were trying to help the MEC to realize that, that there's a risk here, um, that she, we have a duty to highlight to the MEC. Yeah, in one of the responses she says you, you, you didn't follow process, including as well with yes. the gambling board. Did you follow process, advocate? Yes, we did. We followed processes to the T. Um, that's one of the things we were very proud of. We put in policies and procedures in place. We spent a year doing that, making sure that we follow the right prescripts. So who, who, who's now, that was an, uh, you wanted to appoint a new CEO? Yes. And, uh, and a CFO maybe? And a CFO, yes. And, and that was stopped by the MEC, by, by dissolving the board? Yes. You were following a process. Did she yes. have, a, did she communicate with you that she's got preferred candidates? Um, no, she didn't communicate to us that she had preferred candidates. She gave us um, an envelope with a, a CV. I didn't look at it because I didn't want to taint myself in seeing who that person was. I merely handed that over to um, our the recruitment, recruitment agency, agency yes. yes, for them to deal with so that I wouldn't know who the person I mean, you are senior counsel, so you yes. know how these processes would yes. work and the legalities of it all. So you behaved in that, in, in that right way without looking at it. Yes. But at the time, did you think she was interfering? I thought she didn't allow us to follow processes given enough time. Um, she was very quick to announce that we were behind, we were late. Um, this has been running for too long, but she didn't allow us to finalize the process because we were at the cusp of finalizing it. So if given a month, we would have been done, and none of this would have been in the open. But yes, I, I thought she was trying to push us. It's a difficult question to ask you because you're not in a head, but from the actions that you've seen, I mean, uh, a, a, as a professional, Dr. Dr. Villagas, and, and, and you advocate as well, uh, um, what do you think, uh, why would she, as an MEC, and she just came on now, yes. uh, in the new uh, Panyaza Sufi premier area after David Makura vacated the seat when he announced his new cabinet. When things were working process-wise, as you said to the Vegas earlier, properly like under Pakistan, why would Tasneem Mutara behave in this way? What do you think? I have no idea because it's extremely irrational. I mean, for instance, right now we are being audited. We've got the AG in the organization as we speak. They've already sent out their first set of questions and the team that will be auditing the organization. So you need to have the auditing committee um, assisting. And the, the board the sets division. up the audit committee. Exactly, it's the board. It's a, it's, a com it's, a, it's a committee of the board. You need the board to be providing oversight over that process. Why would you disband then or act in this way? Why would you insist on a CEO of your own choice? Because in my case, she had a name um, that in our very first meeting, before 
she could even understand what we were doing, what we were about. And the organization is really doing well compared to what we found as, a, as an organization. For instance, we found it uh, uh, performing at 45%, um, and now we are at 80%. So we've changed a lot. The culture of the organization has changed. People are happy to be at work. And then you have an MEC that insists that she wants to destabilize all of that. The question is why? Because it's very ir irrational. Yeah, when we were speaking about with the editorial team earlier, I said we need, we're going to need to give the MEC a right of reply, Tazim so she can explain, explain herself. Now, very briefly, uh, Advocate, I mean, when you look ahead, you are now out of the system. When, when the board has been dissolved, it means you can't do anything. Am I correct? Yeah, you yeah. are out. So, but when you look at it, I mean, as, as because you are concerned about the yes. state of what the gambling, the gambling board still doesn't have a CEO. I understand, and you, of course, the process has been stopped, and there are preferred names and stuff like that. But what would you be looking at now? What would be worrying you now about the gambling board? Very briefly, I'm the, the state in which you've left it. For now, staff morale. Um, staff was just getting comfortable and getting uh, accepting of the board and moving in the right direction. So staff morale is down. There was lots of suspensions for no reason. Um, even the acting CEO was suspended by the board prior to the board being resolved, dissolved, but she's still acting even though she's been suspended and that hasn't been overturned. Um, and there's no governance. Again, audit, we're also under auditing. There's no governance. And you don't have an audit and risk committee. We ha don't have an audit and risk com committee. Um, yeah. it, it just, from the outside, it sounds, li it sounds li like a mess. I mean, it's a, it's besides staff mess. morale, what else would worry you as the agency? For You've got so many big projects that you mentioned that you're dealing with. For me, it's the economy of the province. I mean, um, we contribute 17% of, of, of the economy is contributed by Gauteng. So we have a burden of ensuring that the, the mm -hmm. economy of the country is thriving. So when you have an MEC literally holding a match, uh, just willing to blow it all up, it's a concern. And you ask yourself that, did she consult anyone? Because, for instance, when you look at the letters, we were m meant to re respond to her by 5 o'clock. I know one of the board members uh, copied, who copied me in her response, she responded at 11. By 6.30 the next morning, I had an, uh, uh, the letter. So we sh you ask yourself, did she consult the executive mm -hmm. that she works with? Does the premier know what's going on? And is the premier condoning this? Um, or is the premier being undermined? For me, I would be interested to know this. Those are very interesting questions. Just a final one, very briefly. Uh, uh, my, my producer, uh, Veronica Pewa, is shouting in my ear already. Um, uh, are you going to take any action? I mean, normally when these kind of things happen, we find out that somebody's taking somebody to court. Are you going to take any action? Yes, definitely, as individuals of the board, because, I mean, the allegations are Is quite... Is le legal action? Legal action, because the allegations are quite serious, and it affects us as individuals, as board members, going forward. So we have to clear that. Okay. Advocate Platt, well, you are a senior counsel. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't, because we were below the threshold when we, we were dissolved as a board. So we don't have any standing to do so. Her board was at a different rate. They still have that okay, legal standing. Okay, but you standing. must be disappointed. You must be gutted about what is happening. I happened. am. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Villagaz as well, you must be gutted. Yeah, because it's, um, I mean, we are professionals who raised our hand and said, Tuma Mina. Um, and the and, uh, uh, majority of the board is made up of those uh, highly skilled individuals. You said, I want to do my take part for the country. Exactly. Yeah. We are here because yeah. of the country. Thank you very much for coming in under these difficult circumstances. As I said earlier in the editorial team, we did speak that we need to give uh, minister, the MEC, Tasnim Mutara, the right of reply just to understand her, her actions. Because for me, where I'm sitting from the outside, there's a lot of wrong governance moves that, that are, being, are being done here. Thank you very much. Uh,